Hi, my name is Jay Emery. I'm the Managing Director of Dingley Dell Enterprises and the manufacturer of the Bushman Wood Fired Oven. In this short how-to video, I'd like to show you the easiest way of lighting your fire in your wood fired oven to make your life easy. Realistically, there's a couple of things that are of critical importance. The first is the size of your logs. This kind of log is not going to get your fire up and running anytime quickly. We recommend that you kind of cut your logs down to this kind of size and it'll be better to feed the oven uh, often uh, rather than try and chuck one big log at a time. So we recommend a log size of about 2 inches by 1 inch by about 10 inches long, uh, which in metric is about 50 by 25 by about 250 mil. Uh, this is the perfect size. If you're doing this professionally, get yourself some decent kindling. This will make life so easy for you as well. And this is just a pine kindling. We use it for starting. Uh, and it is also 10 inches by about half an inch by about one inch wide. Kind of the perfect size for getting the fire going. The other thing that is of critical importance is the moisture content in your wood. Now, wood-fired ovens don't like working on anything with a moisture content of above 20%. In actual fact, if it has got over 20%, you can kiss it goodbye. All that's going to happen is you're going to get a lot of smoke. In actual fact, they work best on wood with a moisture content of less than 15%. And really the only way of knowing whether your moisture content is around that kind of level is to get yourself one of these. Uh, you can get these from most electronic stores. It's a damp meter. And if you just stick it into a piece of wood, <clears throat> you'll see it's got two little prongs. If you stick it into the wood, it'll give you a rough idea of the moisture content of the wood. Uh, this wood here is at 15%, which incidentally is the ambient moisture content of the wood in in the air in the UK. So if you're storing your wood for a long period of time under cover, it should get down to about 15%. This kind of wood, you could check it and it might say 15%, but as soon as you split it, you'll see that it reads much, much higher. So this is 15% now, split it and have a look. When we come to lighting the fire, the easiest way to do that is to build a Jenga stack. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the wood and you're going to assemble it in a stack like this. And the wider you make the stack across the side of the oven, the better. Four or five wide is cool. Make sure that those are all level, it makes life a lot easier. You're then going to lay a stack of wood across the top of this, another line across the top of this, and there we have it. The next thing you're going to do is to lay your good wood over the top of this. Then on the sides, stick a couple of pieces so that this will collapse in onto the pile when it's burning. You're then going to take your fire lighters, and a lot of people talk about fire lighters and say there are issues with them. There are no issues. You run the oven so hot that any flavor from a fire lighter is going to burn off. And all you do is stick the fire lighters underneath, just two fire lighters under each of this, and that will get that fire roaring in no time at all. So we're going to set that up inside the oven, and then we'll take a look from there. There are a couple of things that will also make your life a lot easier when you run a wood-fired oven. The first is the fire grate. This is this little gizmo here. Ours, as you can see, is well used. And this we put in either at the side of the oven or at the back of the oven. But it allows your wood to draw air very freely, and as a result, you get a load of heat. Now, we push this to the back of the oven right when you start. The other thing is the coal hook, so that you can just push the fire to the basket back, put that right to the back of the oven, and it'll stay there while you're initiating your fire. Pop those under there like that and set fire to it. You'll see that quite literally in no time at all you have a roaring fire uh, and then you can move it back or into the fire basket uh, and everything's hunky dory. Right, we've been running for about 15 minutes now, and as you can see, the fire is well established, and we're just going to split it into two piles, one on each side of the oven. If you looked inside the oven, and it's really hot here, so we can't get the camera any closer, but you'll see that the oven on the inside, just over where the fire is, is turning from black to white, and that's a good sign. It means that you're putting enough energy into the dome. So we're just going to split the fire at this point, and all we do is just stick the peel in there, move half of the fire to the left, Put half of the fire to the right. Right. And then throw a couple more logs on. Again, very little ceremony. So here's the coal hook. Just adjust those two fires.
Now, sometimes, sometimes when you do this, uh, your fire might collapse completely uh, and almost go out. So the next tool, which is a great help, is a blowpipe. And this is uh, what we use. It's a piece of copper pipe. It's got a plastic bung on one end and a flattened end on the other. And with this, you can very easily introduce air exactly where you want it, rather than standing here trying to blow it. <coughs> There we go, we've now got these two fires and what this is doing is spreading the heat out on the floor of the, uh, of the oven and putting the heat into the floor as well as spreading the heat over the dough. When the middle half of the oven has turned white, then what we'll do is pick the fires up and throw them into the fire basket and it can then heat the back of the oven as well. We've been running for about 30 minutes now and as you can see the fire is uh, kind of dying down. If you look into the oven you'll see the whole dome is white except for the section at the back. Uh, so the whole dome is white except for the section at the back and what we're going to do now is pick the fire up and throw it into the basket then clean the floor and in about 15 minutes we'll be ready to cook pizza so uh, this is how we do that we use the dirty peel for this this is my dirty peel and it's just as easy as this guys just pick it up and you throw it into the basket once you've pushed it all to the back you can just take the brass bristle brush this is this thing and then just uh, sweep all the excess, all the excess ash to the back of the oven. It doesn't matter if it's sitting just in front of the, the fire basket. That's all happy days. And then you'll see you've still got some ash on the floor. And to get rid of that, again, we just use the blowpipe. And that blows the floor nice and clean. If you need to reinitiate the fire, Again, using the blowpipe, it really makes your life easy. And there you have it. The fire is really ticking over. If you need to put another log on, it really is quite easy. You can either just throw it on, but keep in mind that if you keep throwing the logs onto the back of the, the fire, bashing the back wall, you are going to bash the back wall out. So it's just as easy just to put the log onto the end of the fire, bar, at least the end of the peel, and then just drop it into the fire basket. And jobs are good and we can cook pizza. Well, I, I trust that you found that easy. It is the most simple way that I know to light a fire, get it up and running as fast as possible with the minimum amount of smoke uh, using very dry wood. Uh, if you are limited for space and you can't get access to a good either kiln dried wood or a good dried wood, then you might consider using um, a product like Osolo Mio or Liverpool wood pellets, which are compressed logs. And they look like this. And in the next video, what I'll do is show you how you light a fire using a compressed log like this one here.